name is John Tai. I'm the owner and licensee of the Spotted Dog Pub in Digbeth in Birmingham. I've uh, bought the pub in 1985. It's, uh, as you can probably see, a corner working class Irish boozer. But it's also got a long history of live music, especially in the garden. Part of the story of Mosley is about events and art and, and things going on. And, and as time has gone on, some of the places available to do things in Mosley have been stripped away. We moved into the area because of what Digbeth is and, and, and the history it's had, uh, the reputation it's got, really. Um, for what it does for, for Birmingham, it puts Birmingham on the map, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, a development was proposed opposite the pub, um, which was a derelict building, which is going to be refurbished, uh, 179 apartments plus commercial. We wouldn't expect to know about, you know, you know, the whole process of planning consultation, you know, noise surveys, etc. John has become an expert on it by default. The problem is that the way the legislation is at the moment, the power is completely with the residents. We all know that the thing, you know, the thing is just so criminally unjust in, in about this is you get one complaint, and according to Birmingham City Council Environmental Protection, you know they're obliged, you know, to follow that through. And as a result of you know one, or well, I think it was possibly two complaints, John then up with a noise abatement order. Can't use what is obviously a, a critically important part, you know, of his outside area for playing uh, loud music. Uh, commercially it affects him drastically but basically if he continues to do that he loses his license and his whole business closes. We gathered evidence from residents at the Abacus building, we did a survey, we had numerous letters of uh, support um, and the, uh, the council dragged, out, dragged everything out so it was about six months, eight months later that it was due to go to court. And two weeks before going to court, we had a meeting with the council um, who informed me that um, they'd accumulated £17,500 in costs to that day. Um, and on the day it went to court, they, it would be at least triple that. Uh, and that if I won the appeal, uh, they were guaranteeing that they would appeal that decision to a higher court. So effectively I was looking at down the barrel of a quarter of a million pounds in costs which just coincidentally is what the pub is worth. The trial that he has followed has led him to realise that you know that residential building went up next to his place without developers doing the necessary noise survey that they should have done which would have thrown up you know the noise that emanated not only from John's place but also emanated from further across the road from the Rainbow and also at the Custard Factory etc. All of which would have meant there would have been an incumbent cost upon the developer. They would have had to put in you know insulation and, and double glazing would have cost would have added I don't know I don't know the figure but you know you can guess it's you know six figure sums or more. Bizarrely the, uh, we've, uh, there are 179 apartments there we had complaints from three three residents. Um, I knew that before we went to court that none of those, well, the two of the three were not going to appear in court, didn't want to appear in court, and the main complainant had actually written a letter to Environmental Health asking to withdraw his complaint because he decided that we weren't a noise nuisance after all. We know from you know the amount of people that come and talk to us, the vast majority of people that live in those flats move there because they want to be close to you know the activity and what's going on and they are so so you know dramatically in favor of the spotted dog and the rainbow and other places around that are you know putting on events um, and uh, it's just really concerning that uh, you know basically the their voice if you like or their opinions count for nothing as opposed to you know one person might complain we moved in here knowing full well what big booth was going to be like uh, we know full well exactly what goes on, that's the reason we moved in there. It's also a, a, a subjective thing, when they come out, they don't have like monitoring devices that record a particular level, if you're over so many decibels, you know, that's a noise nuisance, it's fully subjective. They, uh, they, 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 they trot out this wonderful platitude that the experienced environmental health officer's ear is a better judge of noise nuisance than equipment. Now, um, 
This may be the case, but um, I'd love to see that proved. It seems to me that the environmental protection in Birmingham just prosecute this whole issue far more vehemently than is probably the case you know, in other metropolitan councils or you know, councils throughout the rest of the country. Because you just do not see this kind of thing happening in London, Manchester, Liverpool, to, in anything like, to anything like the same degree. Further limitation now that's just come forward in the last few weeks is the residents complain every time we do an event. So the environmental health have been down here monitoring the noise and I've no doubt that within the next 12 months we will probably be stopped from doing any music in the garden. And there had there been surveys and the place would have, and, and the and planning went ahead or development went ahead, then it would have had to have been done to the right level so it's, you know, they wouldn't have uh, made complaints because they wouldn't have been able to hear anything because the insulation would have been great. You do have an issue, I mean, people do have an issue with noise. I can accept that, that's fine, and I'm sure the venues in, in Digworth would happily meet with those people and to mediate and to explain why perhaps it goes a bit too loud. If it is a bit too loud, to get their feedback and then, then they can, you know, then go back and and, uh, and look at what they're doing and to perhaps uh, you know, remediate that. Um, you don't get that. You don't get that at all. You know, you live from day to day on bloody, you know, on tender hooks. I think, well, you know, are we going to get closed down next weekend? You know, is this, um, you know, we've got a, a planning application going through at the moment to enable to play music on the outside area of our warehouse. You know, if they don't get approved, then you know we're in a really, really difficult situation. Well, basically, the rainbow and the world have to close. And if the rainbow closes, I think that's a, that's a you know a real loss to Digworth and to Birmingham. There's a, a lack of venues now. So here we are in the Prince of Wales, where we've got a space which could make a great venue uh, in the beer garden, not just for music, but for I don't know everything from opera to Shakespeare. You know, um, but we're very, very restricted on what we can do. And I think that you know by the end of this year that will be that will be taken away in you know in totality so we'll be even more restricted and that would be a great pity for for the pub and for Mosley. It's on a shoestring at the moment. Um, whether this place survives or not it depends. Uh, it's certainly not going to survive as the pub it is uh, without the use of those facilities. I mean I, I definitely know if we get a noise abatement order we will appeal it you know and we won't control our ways. They will have to literally um, nail up, you know, you know, board up the, the rainbow before we stop, you know, doing what we do. After the rainbow, what next? The custard factory? Is that too prestigious for Birmingham for them to actually do the same? Probably not, I don't know.